Hey, what's up everybody? This is Seth and uh, I wanted to make this video for anybody out there who owns vacant land and is considering getting vacant land liability insurance. For a lot of people, especially if you're a land flipper where you buy and sell land pretty quickly, you may just like completely dismiss this as uh, a viable option just because you own these things for such a short amount of time and it's just not worth the effort of constantly uh, adding properties to your policy and then taking them off just a few weeks or months later. But I wanted to point out this one company, I've not used them before, but I just got off a phone call with them and they told me something that sounded appealing. And that is that it's apparently very easy to add properties and remove them from your policy through their online dashboard, which I haven't seen yet. But if it's at all functional, it could be a lot easier than having to like pick up the phone and call your agent and do this manually every time a property gets added to or removed from your inventory. And also another unique thing is that this agency can charge you monthly monthly for your policy, not annually. So especially for landowners who are not going to own their land long term, you don't have to send in an annual check to cover the entire year. You just pay monthly. So say if you only own a property for three weeks, the most you would be paying for is one month of that policy instead of 12 months. And then having to go through all the rigmarole of getting a refund for the overage that you paid for it. And in terms of what this covers exactly. So the idea is if you own land and somebody walks onto your property and injures themselves, depending on how much coverage you buy, it can cover up to a million dollars per occurrence or $2 million per year, or a million per occurrence or $5 million per year, or $2 million per occurrence or $5 million per year. Now, why would you choose one or the other? Well, as they explained it to me, if you own land that's in an area that gets a lot of like foot traffic, say, I don't know, it's in the middle of a big city and there's people coming and going all the time walking through your property. In that case, you might want to get a higher amount of coverage because there would be a higher probability of somebody walking onto your property and inadvertently hurting themselves. Whereas if you own land out in the middle of nowhere where nobody is ever there or on your property at all, I mean, if you get insurance at all, you would probably want to get the cheaper amount. I'm not telling you what to do, but as I asked them the question of how you would rationalize which kind of coverage to get, that was how they explained it to me. I just thought I would mention that here. And whichever one you pick, this doesn't limit the number of occurrences that could happen or the number of people who could hurt themselves and sue you for it. It just limits the dollar amount per occurrence and per year. So I don't know, there could be a hundred people who hurt themselves and all of them sue you for 10,000 bucks a piece. This would in theory cover that. So it's not the quantity of occurrences or people or lawsuits. It's just the dollar amount that it would cover in total. And really what it covers is if somebody hurts themselves and they tried to sue you, it would cover you if you are found at fault. And it can also pay, I think they said $2,500 of medical expenses. And if the expenses go beyond that, you would then have to submit a claim and you could potentially get more covered, I think. So that's really the whole idea behind this. And if you want to request a proposal, I think you can get a quote within 24 to 48 hours is what they told me. So I'm just going to show you quickly what that process looks like. And also just so you're aware, we do not have any affiliate relationship with this company, at least not at the time of this recording. That doesn't mean we're never going to have one in the future. And if we do, I'll obviously be including that affiliate link beneath this video. But again, at the time of this recording, we don't have any financial incentive for talking about this company. I just noticed them when I did a Google search and it seemed to kind of fit the bill in terms of what land investors are looking for on liability insurance. So I figured I would just shoot this quick video to show you my experience with them. Once you click this button, you're brought to this page where you fill in all of your basic information. It's very easy stuff to answer about yourself and your company and your name and your address and where your property is. And when you go ahead and scroll down here, you can say whether you currently have insurance or whether you're trying to get new insurance for that. And then you can go ahead and click next. And then on the next page, you would enter in the property address. I'm going to quick do that here and then specify vacant land liability coverage only. Does the property have any common areas? No. Our functioning smoke detectors. Uh, I don't even know why they would ask that for vacant land. Clearly, this was not the designed for the specific property use of a vacant land, but I'll just go ahead and say no. Uh, does any commercial operations or cooking occur on the premises? Nope. Is the attached parking? A lot of this stuff is kind of irrelevant, but I'll just say no to all of it. And then the acres, this one is seven acres. And is there a mortgage or third party lender on this? The answer is no to that. And then we'll click next. And then have you had any claims in the last five years? No. Please describe any losses or damage not reported, uh, not applicable, and then not applicable. 
go ahead and submit this and uh, I will pick this back up once I hear back from them and let you know what the cost comes in at. I'm currently paying $317 per year through auto owners insurance for this exact same property. And I never really got any quotes from anybody else. I just went through my existing home insurance carrier just for simplicity's sake. So I'm curious to see if uh, this quote will come back higher or lower or what the differences will be. So I will uh, pick this back up as soon as I get more information. Okay, so I'm back here already. I was expecting this to take like a day or two for this to happen, but I ended up getting this email later in the day. So I got this email from this company. I believe the way this works is the National Real Estate Insurance Group sort of like subcontracts with other local insurance agencies and that's who contacted me. So this is not coming directly from the company that I first submitted the form through. Anyway, you can see this person is saying, please see the attached insurance proposal you requested through NREIG for liability only. So they're kind of referencing what this is all about because they're not emailing me from the original company. And uh, let me know if you want to start the policy and I'll send you the documents to sign. So let's take a look at this quote and just see what the cost is. Download both of these PDFs here, see what they tell me. So this is the schedule at a glance and it shows me uh, what kind of coverage there is. But yeah, I'm seeing right off the bat, the total annual cost is gonna be $159.24. So that's like half of the amount that I'm currently paying for my other policy that I didn't research too hard. I'm kind of wishing I would've uh, checked these guys out first. And uh, I'm actually, I'm not going to proceed with buying this only because my plan for this property is going to change in the next few weeks here. So I'm not actually going to be keeping this as a vacant lot long-term. I'm gonna be developing it, which is going to trigger the need for a different type of insurance than what this is. But I did just want to show you uh, what the experience looks like with these guys and what the coverage looks like and what the cost is. And um, particularly what I like is just the fact that I can pay this on a monthly monthly basis instead of an annual basis if I want to. As you can see, the uh, total monthly cost shows up right here. And again, apparently with the dashboard through the National Real Estate Insurance Group, it's very easy to add and remove properties from your coverage whenever you need to. You don't have to like make phone calls and you don't have to pay for months and months beyond what you need it for because you're only paying by the month. So anyway, it seemed notable enough that I would mention this here. And also just so you understand what determines the cost of your coverage. So this was the one that I applied for this one down here. And you can also see that referenced right here in this proposal right there. So they're kind of getting at uh, the type of coverage that I got. And the other stuff that determines how much it's going to cost for your policy is the location of where the property is. I believe they go state by state. So it's not like zip code by zip code or county or city or township or anything like that. It's just the state where it's at. And then also the size of the property. And then there's also a flat program fee that gets added on top of every policy, which I believe is paid to the National Real Estate Insurance Group, but all those things combined are what uh, give us our final cost over here. So there you go. I'm not saying if or when you should ever get this kind of insurance on your land, but if you're interested, that was my experience. The cost didn't look too bad to me. And keep in mind, this is only the second place I looked into. So there could be cheaper options elsewhere, but uh, just in terms of real estate investors and what they typically need, this company seems to have a pretty good system figured out. So wanted to mention them to you. I hope that was helpful and I wish you all the best.